All right, so today, which is Wednesday, we need to go over any genetics problems that you guys are still having trouble with. The quiz is set for Thursday and the problems are gonna be due on Friday. So you can split it up if you want. Um, and then I did put the ABO lab group, the ABO blood group lab in, and I think I put a due date on that of Saturday the 14th. Again, I, in the announcement, those of you that read it saw that it would help a little bit with, it might, it, I shouldn't say that, it might help you a little bit with blood groups. It might confuse you. So my advice would be, it's totally up to you. Either do the lab before the test or do it after. I'm not gonna ask questions specifically about the lab on the test. So if you wanna just put it off until the weekend, that's fine. Um, I just did wanna get that lab in there because it kind of goes with, you know, it's Mendelian genetics and it's extensions of Mendelian genetics. And I wanted us to be able to do that this week. We have chromatography, a little uh, sort of unknown food nutrient lab, DNA extraction, I think that's it. I think we have three labs left. So I'm probably gonna do DNA extraction for next week. There is not a video, but the directions are super simple. And I'll remind you again, the most important thing is that you put the alcohol in the freezer before you use it. You'll get a great DNA separation. There are no questions to answer for that one. It's just upload a picture of yourself holding your test tube with the DNA in it that you've extracted. I would say uh, onion is good, strawberry is good. Those are great. Banana, we did banana once in um, bio one that worked okay. It's easy to smash, but it's, um, it's so chunky that it's sometimes hard to get a good clean separation. I realize some of you might be allergic to strawberries or onions. Don't use those if you're allergic to them or just be sure you wear gloves and try not to inhale the fumes. It's, um, I think you just need one or two frozen strawberries or fresh. I think you could probably do anything that's pretty easy to, uh, the tissue is pretty easy to smash up, but those are things I know that we've tried and that worked pretty well. Strawberry, banana, onion. Um, and I think you might even, if you're feeling ambitious, you might even, because I, I believe that the protease, the kit that you make up, the protease, there's, there's a lot of it. There's more than you need. You might even do the inside of your mouth, do cheek cells. So if you go like this, like a fish and then spit in the tube, you might be able to get uh, DNA from cheek cells. And we do that in genetics, but I'm not, I don't think the protease is the same. So the, I would do that as a, something fun to do later. Um, any of you that have gotten the, that particular test for COVID, you're pretty you'd be an expert at it but definitely do whatever the um, fruit or vegetable that's suggested. And again, that's gonna be for next week. The ABO blood groups, do them over the weekend, do them sometime as soon as you can. All right, now, also for chapter 16, there's a great video um, that H, the Howard Hughes Medical Institute video, it is, I think I just put the link there. I don't think I can actually copy the whole video. So you'll have to go to YouTube and actually find that video. But I wanted you to see the person who was talking and um, see the, um, if you go to HHMI, Howard Hughes Medical Institute, uh, videos on DNA, you'll see the history of DNA or the story of DNA. So I put that on there, I thought, but I'm telling you right now that link doesn't actually work. It just shows you the person and a little bit about like where to find it on YouTube so you know what you're looking for. And yes, of course, Angelina wants to know about pedigree. She's in trouble with the homework genetics problems too and can we review problem four? Sure. So I'm looking for where you need a pedigree, Angelina. I don't see it. Um, the pedigree that I see is on uh, is on number four. Is that what you asked? Sorry. It talks about chickens. Yeah, sure. Okay, let's see. Problem one on which one, Nahiba? On the second one. Um, in the tulips, 
the tulips is not as complicated as you think it is. So yes, of course. Well, um, I did not charge my pencil last night, so I don't know how long I'm going to have with it, with the pencil. So we'll see. Where are my, oh, why is this all different today? Where are my whiteboards? It's not. Okay. Uh, I have lost. Oh, there it is. Got it. Sorry. Having a brain fart there. All right. So let's start with the tulip problem because that seems to be people have had a couple questions about that one. So it, I, it just wasn't typed very well. Okay, so my intention was that the tulips would be a P generation here at the top. Okay. In tulip petals with white stripes are dominant over yellow petals. So I put two words on purpose. That's, that's the big um, throw off there. But the parent generation, pink with white petals, pink, pink petals with white stripes are dominant over yellow plain. So I'm gonna put P like this, and that's going to equal pink with stripes. And two little peas are going to equal yellow. Plain. A two pink, a tulip with pink petals is crossed with one, with is crossed with what? That's a terrible sentence. And all the offspring have pink petals with white stripes. Oh, that's supposed to be, sorry. It's supposed to be a tulip with pink petals is crossed with one with yellow petals. And all the offspring have pink petals with white stripes. There we go. So that was my poor thing, my brain working faster than my hands. All right, so uh, we've got a pink with white stripes crossed with a plain yellow and all the F1 are pink. So that means that pink is dominant as it already stated and because they're all pink, this one must have been homozygous. So then we would show this box. The sign alert would be off to each allele and draw the Punnett square described across the top. Check and check. If these tulips are allowed to self-fertilize, what do you predict the offspring will look like? Complete a second Punnett square to support your answer. So basically there, the question's asking you then what would happen if we had self-fertilization? So we always write it like this, an F1 crossed with an F1, but because they're flowers, because they're plants and they have both male and female parts, they have pollen and ovules, they can fertilize themselves unless you put little cheesecloth bags over them and prevent them. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the genotypes we already know from the F1 are all this. They're all heterozygous. So we would have big P, little p crossed with big P, little p. And then it asks you, what will they look like? What will the appearance be? And the answer, just like we did last time with um, when we had two alleles, sorry, when we had two characteristics, it should always be three to one. It should always have three fourths pink with white stripes and one fourth yellow. 
So that's number one. That's um, my failure on that one. So I will go back in and try to fix that. I apologize. That's some poor typing on my part. Um, sorry, Angela, I have to read your whole thing. Would I be wrong if I represented pink with white stripes as capital P of the superscript of white because the thought was co-dominant? Oh no, yes. It's so like this, you were gonna do this or you were gonna do this. Which one, Angelo, just tell me the first one, you're gonna do that. Um, it's not, that this is an incomplete. Usually we use this for uh, incomplete or um, when a trait has multiple alleles. And this is just, this is a single characteristic. It's like saying, I'm trying to think of another example, all right? Um, it's like saying, and the stripes, that isn't even really true. The stripes are caused by a virus, but whatever. So this, this is, um, think about like uh, petunias. I happen to have some that aren't quite dead yet, right? And they are white with a purple stripe. That's different than being uh, light purple. Right, so pink with stripes, that's a single characteristic. They're not light pink, right? So if they were light pink, like a blend of pink and white, then that would definitely be incomplete. The incomplete problem on this set was the frogs, but I can give you another one, um, a vampire problem with fangs. Um, yes, I wouldn't do this, especially on the quiz, because this will flag to me that you're trying to use two different letters for the same trait or characteristic. I would stick with, um, if it's a monohybrid cross, just with a single letter. If you want to do this, you would have, it would have to be like that, right? And then your other characteristic would have to be, I don't know what you would have done for that one. Uh, big C, when usually when you super script like that, then you keep did you do that? Did you, let me ask you this, Angelo. Did you do it this way? Um. Yeah, I did like um. For, if you uh, did. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I also did like another superscript for um the other trait because like I thought the problem asked um you're crossing like a pink with stripes and like you know just like pink with like plain petals. Oh right, I see what you mean. Yeah, no, just don't do that. Okay. Do that. It wasn't meant to be that hard, right? Thank you. It was it was it was bad English, bad text, bad text, bad typing. That's what happens when I do things late at night. Yeah, for me that's like after eight thirty. Right? It gets all fuzzy. Okay, and then the chickens. Angelina wants to know about the chickens. That's probably not written very well either, because um, I think I wrote that on the fly as well. So let's <laughs> let's take a look at these chickens. In chickens, a multi-feathered allele is present. A multi-feathered tail is present in some birds. It is caused by a recessive allele on the X chromosome. A rooster has this trait. Neither of his parents nor his grandparents have the disease or trait. What are the genotypes of the parents, the grandparents, and the rooster? Please draw pedigrees to indicate how the disease was inherited by the rooster. Okay, so let's start with this rooster. So it's asking you, right, it's both a sex-linked trait, this number four, Sorry, this number four is both a sex link trait and a pedigree problem, right? Uh, tells you specifically that it is caused by a recessive allele on the X. So I'm going to indicate, oh, I'll make it X little m for the trait because it's a multi feathered tail, right? Or you could do, I, I, that's what I'm going to choose, right? So this chicken, right, the male chicken, the rooster would be XY. Um, a female rooster in this case would be XX. Rooster has this trait. Neither, neither of his parents nor his grandparents have the trait. What are the genotypes of the parents, grandparents, and the rooster? Okay, so you, in pedigree problems, you always work backwards. So we start with what we know. We know this rooster has the characteristic. So we're going to color him in. And above him, we're going to put, I don't think I gave enough space there, sorry. Let me try again. 
because we have to do his parents and his grandparents. So here's our rooster and he has the trait, right? That's why he's colored in, right? Because he has the disease or the trait. He needed rooster parents, so a rooster and a hen here, and neither his parents or his grandparents. So I'm gonna follow the grandparents on this side, this, and we're gonna put these grandparents over here like this. And we don't know if he had other siblings, right? But if he had other siblings, they'd be out here coming off this bar from these two, this particular meeting. We're just gonna stick with this little rooster. Okay, so how did he get the disease then? If his dad is blank, he doesn't have the disease. His rooster dad does not have the characteristic. He can only in inherit Y from his dad, from his rooster dad. That's where the Y comes from. He got his X from his mother, from his hen mother. And so she does not have the multi-feathered tail. We were told it's a recessive trait. So the only way his mom could have be colored in or have the multi-feathered tail is if she had two copies. So she must be a carrier. So people indicate that as a dot. I was always taught to indicate it as like a half color in like this, but you can do whatever you want. I think the dot was just easier to put in textbooks a long time ago. Anyway, so mama has a normal X and then she has the mutated X for the multi-feathered tail. So these grandparents, we don't know, but clearly we know his grandfather on this side must be normal. And this, remember, sorry, sex link traits are passed through the female. so. We know that she must look normal. She has at least one copy of the good X. We don't know what her other genotype might be. And still, because neither of the grandparents express the traits of this grandfather, he is normal. And this grandmother then must have passed the trait on, but she doesn't show the trait. So she too must be a carrier. So she's gonna be X plus little arm. So this chicken, this hen, got the good X from her father and the mutated X from her mother. And then she passed that mutated X on to her son. All right, blah, blah, blah. Where are the genotypes? Please draw a pedigree to indicate. All right, on the same farm is a hen, a little hen with a multi-feathered tail. Oh, so we know things about her. So she's got a multi-feathered tail. So we're going to color her in because she has the trait. And if she has it because it's recessive, she has to have two copies. What is her genotype and the genotype of her parents? Hmm. Well, she can't get two X's from mom. So she has to get one of these X's from her father. So he must be affected. And her mother is at least um, a carrier. So her mother could be that or little one. We don't know because it didn't tell us what her parents looked like. B, if this rooster and hen mate, what are the possible genotypes and phenotypes of their baby chicks? Okay, so we're crossing this hen here. Let's use some other colors. This hen, right, with this little rooster. So they're going to become our parents over here. So let's put X M Y crossed with X M X M, and then you need to make a Punnett square for that. and fill it in and then tell me what the possibilities are. I'm not gonna fill it in for you since I already did the rest of the problem for you. <laughs> so that's, that's as much as you're gonna get. Other questions? You're welcome, Angelina. Other questions either about these problems or other problems? that um, you encountered somewhere, wherever you went to look for answers on the internet, in your textbook, in mastering. Um, 
guess we're good there. Yes, no, maybe so. Can we go over how to set up number five? Um, it's a blood type problem, right? So I'll help you set it up, but I'm not going to give you the whole problem because these are extra credit. You're supposed to be figuring them out on your own. All right, it has been determined if rabbits have multiple blood types. Let's see if how well I wrote this one. Pink, blue, and yellow. And notice I gave you the symbols. So I made pink a capital B, P and blue a capital B. So that means they're co-dominant. And yellow is two little y's. So that tells you already, it's just like a blood type problem. You can think of this as A, B, and O. All right, so let's not do that, let's do this. Right, so it's the same. Uh, pink and blue are codominant. Yellow just has to tells you if a female rabbit with blood type P and male rabbit with B have baby rabbit with Y, what are the genotypes? Of genotypes? So it's just it's asking for a single Punnett square, um, and you might have to do a couple trial and errors to figure out how they could have gotten a baby bunny with yellow, right? Two little Ys. And then it's asking you what are the chances they will have another baby bunny with um, blood type Y. Every time there's a mating, it's a new box. So whatever this percentage is out of these, that's the same percentage for the next one. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm trying to look real fast at the quiz problems that I put on there. And seeing if any of them are, I don't know what I did with the other one. So the trick on the quiz is, that has the problems on it in the directions when when you guys um, make these go away. How do I get back? Stop sharing, there we go. The trick on the quiz problems is there, and it, it will tell you this in the directions, but I'm gonna tell you again, because um, some people watch these videos, some people don't, some people read the announcements carefully, some people don't. So I'm trying to give everybody the same set of directions in order for me and actually in order for you as the student to choose uh, the problems that you wanted to do I had to put all five problems up there and make them worth three points each in order to get a total of 15 in the grade book I am only going to grade three of the problems you have to choose and they are actually worth five each three so five ten fifteen that's the only way I could set it up and give you the choice from a set that I predetermined. So you'll see that in the announcements and I'm telling, I mean, in the directions to the quiz and I'm telling you now, choose three, they're worth five points each. They're worth five. You get partial credit for each part of the problem that you do correctly. So if you identify the parents correctly, that's a point. If you do the Punnett square correctly, that's a point sometimes two points, depending if it's a monohybrid or dihybrid cross. There are three sets. So the different, you're gonna get different problems. They're randomly generated depending on, I don't know if it's alphabetical, I forget how I set it up, but you're gonna get five to choose from. And in every set of five, there is a monohybrid cross, a dihybrid cross, a blood type problem, a sex link problem and a pedigree. And they may be at an incomplete dominant. So they're gonna be mixed together. One of the problems is gonna have a pedigree attached to it, or one of the problems will be um, you know, sex linked and a pedigree so that you do both of those things. But rather than me putting, trying to put six problems on there and having you choose three, which I couldn't get it to make it be fit, worth 15, um, this was easier. So you'll have the choice to do any type 
And every set of every quiz set will have a monohybrid cross and a dihybrid cross, which I kind of consider those are the easier ones. And then you will have to pick one of the specials. So one strategy for studying for this is practice a couple times one of the specials that, that you like to do. And then when you see it on the test, just pick that one. Okay, so that's that's my that's my advice. I mean, I can't read that. Um, for the multiple choice part, Leah, it's all of the notes. So it's um, all of the notes from chapter 14, um, the videos from chapter 14. I would watch the videos. It's all, it's all Mendel, the laws. Um, there are some, I think there are some simple, like super quick problems, like uh, what if, I'm not, I, I'm pretty sure, let's see, like, like this, like on the test, on the quiz. What I mean by super short is if it says something like, um, if a heterozygous individual for a single trait for one trait or character is crossed with a homozygous recessive individual. I know this is not writing this very well, but then uh, what are, you know, what will be the percentage of phenotypes in the offspring that are dominant and recessive? And essentially you could just pick any trait and do this and then be able, like off to the side and be able to say, oh, she's asking me, it's gonna be 50-50 and then pick that from the choices, right? So there might be a few like super simple uh, monohybrid crosses on there. Um, but the rest of it is just, remember, not the probability, um, the math part of the probability, but all the rest of the stuff about how Mendel did his experiments, all the stuff that's in the videos from this chapter. All right, anything else that you guys have? Questions, comments, worries, concerns? It's short, I think, Leah. I think it's only 20, 25 because of the um, prob the problems are kind of the main part of it. So I think it's kind of short, but I'm not sure. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to tell you. I don't think so. I think we're good for now. Um, just sort of like we're, we're going for the rest of the semester, 16 and 17 come next. Um, I would keep the pedal pressed on go for the next like week before at least this week and up until Thanksgiving. And then it's a little bit easier. So the next section is um, basically all about DNA, replication, transcription, translation. These are step-by-step -step processes, names of enzymes that you will have to learn. You'll notice there's already chapter 16 and 17 are reading are already posted. I think they're posted to be due for Monday. Monday, I'll be going over in the Zoom meeting, um, I'll be going over 16 quickly uh, because there's a good video and there's a, a professionally done video. And then I also have one from summer or spring that's posted that's pretty, um, uh, very specific about replication in particular. And then Wednesday, we're going to do chapter 17, which I kind of feel like has three parts, transcription, translation, mutations for pile one. So we'll be going through those things again, relatively quickly. I think there's good videos up for those. If there aren't, I'll make one with you guys. And then that quiz will come on the 24th, on the, the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. I will not assign a lab for the Friday after Thanksgiving. And then we'll have um, the Monday after Thanksgiving, there's reading for chapters 22, 23, and 24. This is our evolution section. I'm shortening it a little bit. Uh, usually I kind of go on and on longer about it, but it's virtual, so it's a little bit different. Then quiz six is set for and that's not you, sorry, that's microbiology. Um, then um, that quiz, which for you guys will be quiz seven, is set for December 8th. 
And then we have chapters 25, 27, and 29, which that quiz will be on the 15th. And then remember our lab final will be on the 18th. And then that'll be a semester. So we're getting um, down to the, uh, toward the end. I do not have anything posted in mastering for, I don't think for chapters 14 and 15. I'll see, I might put some things up there for, 15, for 16 and 17. I think I'd rather you focus on the notes that I've provided as well as the videos because it's a little bit less than what's in your book. And same for 22, 23, 24. I don't think I'm going to post a lot more mastering assignments, a lot more mastering homework assignments, maybe one or two, um, but not as many, not, not nearly as intense as we had at the beginning. So we're going to ease up on the mastering a little bit, but focus more on what's on the videos and what's in the note outlines. And then um, we have a few more labs to do, and then we'll call it a semester. <laughs>